Hello, John. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, good to see you again. How's the show treating you so far? Ah, it's great. Yeah. So let's just talk about a little bit of background on the brand for people who might not know. Can you just tell us a little bit about the product and the inspiration for it? Yeah. So Proposition Cocktail Co. is a line of better for you all natural alternatives to traditional cocktails. And we kind of think of them as powered by plants. So instead of alcohol, we infuse our products with a broad spectrum of adaptogens, one of which is our hemp extract. Um, as well as like a lot of other plant-based compounds that are sort of feel-good, mood-enhancing. Mm -hmm. So where are you guys currently available? Um, we are actually picked up in distribution in Northern California, so we're all over the Bay Area. Uh, we're in some places like 7-Eleven and Marin, um, not through the national channel, but through our distributor. And then as well as um, cafes, juice shops, a lot of fast, casual, and convenience as well. Mm -hmm. And you were in this summer's New Beverage Showdown. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that because we're kind of in the midst of the final rounds of that here. Um, so kind of how do, you, how do you pitch this product on stage and what are like the pressures of doing that um, in this setting? Well, you know, I think the New Beverage Showdown actually helped me trim a lot of the fat on how okay. I pitched the product. Um, originally when I was coming out into market, um, I was probably talking about it as a multifunctional product with too many different use cases, and I think that the New Beverage Showdown really helped me streamline that and feel a little bit more comfortable with my value proposition as being a non-alcoholic cocktail. Um, and so, yeah, ultimately I think that things like the New Beverage Showdown that really give a chance to the industry to kind of validate or invalidate your product, give you feedback, and then kind of align that with what consumers are saying, um, both on the industry and then the consumer side. Mm -hmm. So what do you, advice do you have for anybody that's doing it right now? Um, I think my advice is that something that I didn't do necessarily last year, I was kind of doing more my um, investor pitch a bit, I feel okay. like, on stage. Very serious. I actually dropped some stuff about social justice, which I'm really proud of. Mm -hmm. But what I recognize about BevNet in particular and also about the platform is that it's a marketing platform and that you should be marketable. You should be marketing your product and yourself and your community and your value proposition in, in that way. So it should be a little bit lighter than more of like an institutional investment pitch. Um, it's mm -hmm. really important to talk about numbers and the facts if you have them. But really what it comes down to is like cliche enough, be yourself um, and don't take it as seriously as you would if you're trying to, let's say, close some money with some investors. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in that case, your dry pitch is not always that successful either. So um, in that sense, I think that it's more about showcasing who you are, and what differentiates your product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was actually you just mentioned, it, but I was going to ask you about... Um in your pitch, you talked about how cannabis is a civil rights issue. Can you talk a little bit about that and the fact that you guys take the opportunity when you can to talk about that? Yeah, so you know we've leaned out of sort of CBD or cannabis as a brand. Again, we're powered by plants, but mm -hmm. we do play in the space and we do use these compounds. So for us, it's really important to be a catalyst for conversation whenever we can. And I think that something that's interesting is that anybody who is consuming cannabis or maybe you know a beverage manufacturer that's putting in their product, a supplier that's distributing it, all these people part of the supply chain are actually activists and helping move the mm -hmm. needle forward. And so I think that there's a lot of rights to be sort of um, wrongs to be righted in this war on drugs. That's kind of in mass as a way to target um, communities and mostly mm -hmm. communities of color. Um, and so I think that it's everyone's right, um, everyone's responsibility as a cannabis user and someone in the space to kind of get involved and to be vocal about that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about how you communicate use cases to people because, you know, Proposition Cocktail Code, do you have, like, the cocktail name? Does that ever really confuse people or um, is that, have you found that's, like, an issue where people are, like, unsure of it? Yeah, so I think that we, like, kind of obviously lean into it with our mm -hmm. flasks and the cocktail right. name. Um, what we do want to do is kind of reclaim what the idea of cocktail can be. And mm -hmm. so um, we have functional components to our beverage. It's not a one re one replacement, and you're not going to get high, um, yeah. or you're not going to get intoxicated. But it is one of those chill out without missing out sort of things. So mm -hmm. um, from that point of view, you know, we don't call them mocktails; we call them zero proof cocktails. Sure. And so I think that is um, something that resonates with people. There's a lot of different use occasions for that. You know, maybe the moment of ritual for yourself, or if you're out with friends at a party. Um, so we just really try to create products that fit into people's lives um, and can kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. And you also, when you were asked about it at the New Beverage Showdown, talking about um, CBD efficacy and dosing and kind of like what it, it actually, like how it affects people. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you kind of know based on, and how you lighten it on 15 milligrams? Yeah, so what's interesting is that there's still a lot of, because of prohibition, mm -hmm. um, a lot of unknowns, right? We don't really right. have a lot of understanding about low dose products and their efficacy per se. Um, we, we only really have clinical uh, style clinical studies for a larger dosing efficacy. Mm -hmm. So 
when doing consumer testing and thinking about how people were using the product, likely they're going to consume more than one. So what we didn't want to do was give them too much product that they might perceive as a high dose, even though there's not a lot of studies or efficacy for that. And when we were doing our consumer testing, when we had 25 milligrams on the label, consumers thought it was quite a lot. Um, and when we dropped it down to 15, it felt more comfortable. So we try to just create products that allow our customers to get in, sober and kind of curious. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. John, thank you so much for joining of us. And uh, My pleasure. I really hope you enjoy the rest of the show. we got a couple hours left. So. Thanks. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Hey, did you like what you just saw? Well, for more from BevNet or Nosh, hit subscribe or ding that bell.